Alec Baldwin, A Very Angry Narcissist, Part 5. TMZ reports, It's a case of too bad, so sad for Alec Baldwin. According to the art gallery owner, he's suing for selling him a fake painting. Mary Boone responded to Baldwin's suit, saying the actor waited more than six years to file the suit over Sea and Mirror, the Ross Blechner painting Boone's gallery sold him for $190,000. In documents, Boone's legal team says the statute of limitations has run out, so Baldwin's got no beef, legally speaking. Assertion of control through litigation. Unmeritorious claim, delusion. Further, she claims Baldwin committed tax fraud. Boone's attorneys claimed he should have paid $16,625 in NY city and state tax on the painting. If that's accurate, his failure to do so is a sense of entitlement and an absence of accountability. But instead, he had it shipped momentarily to his California home, then back to his NYC pad. Boone says she's not conceding. Alex counterfeit claims are true. She's just not addressing it because his lawsuit's too late. She's asking the court to toss the case. Moving on to 2018, an article in Vanity Fair tells us, As a great thinker once said, Seasons change, so do cities, and yet some things are immutable, never altered, as concrete as the very sidewalks of New York. The leaves may have turned a golden ochre in the last week or so, winter whispering its way into Manhattan once again. There may be a target on Avenue A now, its bright fluorescent light drowning out a lost Bohemia's ghosts. Things are different, but don't worry. Just when you begin to feel that the New York you once knew is gone forever, Alec Baldwin goes and gets in a fight with someone on the street to remind us all that some things never change. Yeah, Alec Baldwin was arrested on Friday for allegedly punching a man in a dispute over a parking spot on 10th Street in Greenwich Village. Physical violence, heated fury, assertion of control. The story seems to be that Baldwin had a friend holding a free spot for the actor, but then some other jabroni came swooping in and stole the spot, incensing Baldwin. When the unidentified man got out of the car, Baldwin accosted him, and then supposedly there was a punch involved, also a fuck off. Baldwin was arrested and taken to the 6th Precinct, where he was charged with assault. The individual taking the parking place is a threat to control, which ignites Alec Baldwin's fury, driving him through hatred and the act of physical violence, and to believe that he was entitled to that spot and the other individual is a low-down schmuck who needs dealing with, so that he asserts control in the most rudimentary methods with heated fury through physical violence and verbal violence. Further reporting of this states... Witness tell us the actor got into an argument with another man over a parking spot near 10th Street and 5th Avenue. Our law enforcement sources tell us Alec had a friend holding the spot for him, but the other man swooped in. We're told Baldwin became irate. An argument ensued and Baldwin punched the man in the jaw. The alleged victim, a 49-year-old male, was taken to the hospital. One witness tells us Alec yelled, fuck off, during the fight. Cops were called and Alec was arrested. Baldwin lives in the area. There is then, covered by Vanity Fair, a Howard Stern interview, which provides further insight into the mind and the outlook of Alec Baldwin. The article tells us, Alec Baldwin is known mostly for two things these days, needling the president with his Saturday Night Live impression and getting so angry he gets arrested, reference to what I've just talked about. Howard Stern, radio host and good listener, asked him about the latter hobby when the visitor, when the actor visited his show on Wednesday. Baldwin's answer, he's not really an angry guy, and he learned that in court-mandated anger management. Revision of history, deflection, lie, all of the material that I've mentioned so far shows incident after incident after incident of heated fury. Racial slurs, homophobic slurs, shouting at people in the street, getting irate on an aeroplane, making threats against people, ranting at individuals on Twitter. Those are all instances not of anger, but actually of fury. The Vanity, Art Vanity Fair article continues, Baldwin's most recent arrest in the early days of November was for a tussle with a man over a parking spot in Greenwich Village. Baldwin was arrested and charged with assault and harassment, and he was sent to anger management. After he was released from the precinct in November, he tweeted, Normally, I would not comment on something as egregiously misstated as today's story, 
However, the assertion that I punched anyone over a parking spot is false. Well, eyewitnesses seem to suggest to the contrary, Alec. Revision of history and lie. I want to go on the record stating as such. And he maintains that he did not throw a punch to this day, telling Stern that cameras caught the whole thing. What could Baldwin, who has a history of these kinds of scuffles, here, there and wherever, there are people who might annoy him, learn from anger management? De-escalation techniques, maybe? A breathing exercise or two? healthy processing methods that can mitigate the worst impulses of an excitable heart. Mostly, though, it sounds like he was just a listener that day. When you go to anger management, you realise you're not that angry, he said. So, accordingly, his grandiosity causes him just to determine, I'm not angry, and therefore none of this applies to me. Rejection of the threat to his sense of control by basically saying, I'm not angry, so why are you there, Alec? Delusion. There, on Stern, he didn't seem completely zen. Nobody measured his blood pressure as far as I know, and appearances can be deceiving. But he did say, Now I've got every fucking numbnuts asshole in the world writing to me online going, Yo, you don't have a garage. You don't have a parking garage? Baldwin clarified that he does have a garage as well as a driver, but his wife uses the car, and he was packing up to go to Long Island that day. So maybe a small amount of anger management is not the one-size-fits-all option we all thought it was. Another thing that might help is exercise. Baldwin says he's on a regimen, which comes courtesy of another headline-grabbing SNL cast member, Pete Davidson. He said, Do 100 push-ups a day, and I do it now, he said. I do more. I do like 125, 150. Grandiosity, one-upmanship. On the topic of his health... Bonman revealed that SNL executive producer Lorne Michaels is jacked now thanks to a Fitbit and a standing desk, which somehow turned into a story about a truly horrible hip replacement surgery YouTube video. Stop watching the above 125 before he starts talking about the part of the bone they have to saw off to get to the new ball in place. I wouldn't want my worst enemy to have to watch Baldwin explain how hip replacement surgery works, but I will dream about making them watch it a clockwork orange style. See Baldwin, there is a healthy way to process these heightened emotions. And this article reporting on his interview with Howard Stern demonstrates a complete inability to be accountable for his actions, the operation of delusion, the rejection of threats to control. We now turn, in part six, to what has been grabbing the headlines recently with regard to the fatal shooting of Helena Hutchins. The material that is presented so far demonstrates a whole range of narcissistic indicators. It shows a sense of entitlement. It exhibits behaviours which show that he operates with an absence of emotional empathy. He is an individual that orders people around. He requires an immediate response to the things that he wants. He is self-absorbed. He demonstrates an absence of emotional empathy because of the way that he treats people, his manipulative behaviours. He lacks accountability by virtue of the fact that he repeatedly tells lies. He demonstrates that he doesn't offer anybody emotional support, witness the way that he behaved with his daughter, that he is superficial in his behaviours, that he doesn't truly apologise. He exhibits considerable grandiosity. He engages in showmanship. He thinks he's better than other people. He engages in exaggeration. He boasts. It's evident that he's vain. He dominates conversation. He's been prone to incidents of magical thinking. He's extremely haughty in his behaviours. He badmouths people left, right and centre. He's rude, he's condescending, he's dismissive, he's arrogant. He believes he's always right. He sees people as being stupid. He's a poor listener, he has no patience and is obnoxious and, of course, has a reputation for being difficult. He engages in a wide range of manipulative behaviours, albeit of a more rudimentary style. There's flattery, the telling of lies, future faking, triangulation with object, triangulation with person, absent silent treatment, backhanded compliments, physical violence, pity play, smearing, false compassion, false contrition, invalidation, belittlement, withdrawal, denial, provocation, projection, blame shifting, use of threat, use of insult, use of fury, damage to property, revision of history, Shouting, argumentativeness, bullying, intimidation, deflection, 
false accusation, accusations appearing out of nowhere, vagueness, finding fault, hijacking conversations. He has poor boundary recognition, demonstrated by the way that he feels that he's entitled to talk about anybody that gets in his way. He shows repeated instances, of course, of the narcissistic dynamic. He operates by way of seeing other people as an extension of himself. He acquires character traits. He exhibits black and white thinking. He exhibits a need to assert control. He also demonstrates a perceived threat, that he responds to that perceived threat to that control. He's a hypocrite. He exhibits envy, objectification, compartmentalization, and paranoia. He engages in hoovering, one-upmanship. He's competitive. He operates in a manner whereby he shelves people. He picks them up and puts them down. And he's superficial, along with being deluded. So he exhibits a wide raft of behaviours that clearly support that he is a narcissist. And those behaviours, of course, allow us to interpret his various behaviours for the purpose of understanding the way that his mind is working and the way that his narcissism is operating. And this is very important to help you understand his behaviours surrounding what has happened recently with the tragic death of Helena Hutchins. I move on to the issue of the shooting in part six. Join me there. <laughs>